We love soil blocks. Every year we make thousands of them for our seedling sale. And at this point, we think we have some tips and tricks to help you do them easily and correctly. We love soil blocks because they're the perfect way to not make a bunch of plastic waste here on the farm. We sell all of our seedlings in soil blocks so we don't have to worry about putting all this plastic garbage out into the world. Some people are nervous about if the soil blocks will be easy to use, easy to handle, and in our seedling sale we have no problem picking them up, sending them off, people getting them home, getting them into the ground, they're very easy to use. And they also grow really happy and healthy seedlings. So we can't say enough good things about them. When I first considered soil blocks, one of the things that I found the most intimidating was all the recipes for the soil to use inside of them sounded like a magic potion to me. It had things I couldn't find anywhere. And I figured if I couldn't find these these recipe bits to put in my magic cauldron, I wouldn't be able to have successful soil blocks. But here on the farm, we do not fuss with any of that. We just use potting soil. This specific potting soil already has fertilizers mixed in, so we use it straight out of the bag. But in past years, when we've had a potting soil that needed amendments, things added to it, we've added a little bit of fertilizer, a little bit of compost. No matter what we've used, we've been able to make it work. We have our soil blocking station set up, but the truth is, I don't actually do this part. I make Ian do this part. So let's bring in the pro. One of the problems that people have when they're making soil blocks is that they don't put enough moisture into their soil and, and then it gets really dry and it just falls apart. So it never like sticks together. So you should have enough moisture in there that you can actually squeeze it and see the drips come out. You can add too much water to your soil mix and then it gets really mucky and it'll suction into your soil blockers and start really kind of screwing up the, the size of them. We get questions about the right amount of moisture to use with potting soil all the time. And I think it's really easy to underestimate how much water you need to add. Usually the volume is almost comparable to one part soil, one part water. So don't be surprised if you need to add a full bucket of water to a bucket of dirt. The other way that people can screw up their soil blocks is by not putting enough pressure when you put the soil blocker down into the soil. You actually have to push down with a fair amount of force and then I use a side to side motion to kind of get it to all level off at the same level. I also come at it with a little bit of an angle and then I turn and I push down and side to side and then you can see that kind of looks perfect there to me. And then when I put the soil blocks down, I just tap the last one so that they all stay nice and tight Squeeze up, and there you go, perfect soil blocks. I'm gonna mess some up. I'm not gonna put enough dirt in there. And then, see how they're shorter? If you don't keep enough dirt in your little bucket that you're making the soil blocks in, then uh, as the level drops, you'll notice that your soil blocks start getting shorter and shorter and shorter until you top it up and then all of a sudden, they're you know a third taller again so uh, it's good to always be throwing more shovelfuls of dirt in your soil block mixing bucket just to keep that uh, there's lots of material to push down into the soil blocks to make your soil blocks with i really want to reiterate the importance of the amount of pressure that you put while using the soil blocks because I think this is the spot where lots of people stumble and mess up and then they can't handle their soil blocks. Their soil blocks fall apart. I don't do this job because this job really hurts my hands. Ian's hands are a lot stronger than mine. If I do this after a couple trays, my hands start to ache from the pressure. So <laughs> if this is really comfortable for you and you don't have the hands where someone is like, oh, you gotta open the stuck pickle jar for me, then you probably are doing it wrong. You want to use a lot of pressure. As you're making your soil blocks, material is gonna accumulate kind of all around here and that can actually start to get in the way. It's good to keep a bucket of water and then just dip it in, you know, swish it around, 
comes back out, it's all clean, maybe once a tray, do that, maybe once every two trays. It doesn't have to happen all that often, but you know, just having this handy makes it really quick to clean it off. The dirt can get crammed in here and then they don't make nice clean uh, blocks. You know, they'll have chunks kind of cut out of every single one of them. Soil blocks come in a variety of different sizes and then they make a variety of different size blocks for your different seedling needs. The main blocker that we use here is the two inch soil block and this will make 50, 50 soil blocks per tray. They are the equivalent of a plug tray like this to give you a visualization. We find that because the two inch soil blocks are quite large, they use a lot of dirt. We are currently going through a 3.8 cubic foot bale of dirt for every 30 trays with the two inch. We also have a one and a half inch blocker. This is new for us this year. And we're really excited about this for on the farm because it's gonna do about 80 blocks per tray, kind of similar to these 72 trays that we use so often. And these smaller blocks means that they'll be ready to be planted out earlier and will save on a lot of soil. And then finally on the really slow growing, the really tiny seeds, we have these mini blockers. I think that these are three quarter inch and it does 20 blocks at a time. And they are about the equivalent of these 200 trays. So these, they're very small. Don't make the mistake that I did thinking that you're getting, getting a deal, something that'll make 20 blocks at once. Uh, the three quarter inch is great for flowers, but we wouldn't use it for, you know, any of our more vegetable seedling sale stuff. They're just too small. For context, here is a pumpkin seed compared to <laughs> compared to the size of these blocks. So you can pretty quickly see why it's not going to work with every single seed. <laughs> Although my hands don't get fatigued in making soil blocks, they do hurt if if I have an unpadded handle like this one. Uh, we just put some foam on here and then and then taped it down. Uh, the difference is substantial. Uh, it was actually hurting a lot before we did this. So make sure you pad out your soil blocker. We love soil blocks here and we're going to be using them for years and years to come. I know sometimes it can be a bit of a struggle when you're first learning how to use them, but hopefully these tips will help you get a lot of success from the start. Don't give up. Just keep trying. You know, the best thing about soil blocks is if they mess up, throw them back in the bucket, just turn them into new soil blocks. Okay, I have like 50 more trays of soil blocks to make today. So can you like get out of here, please? Go. Tch.